Welcome back to Triptych Algebra. Today we're talking about sets of numbers. What I have right here is a discrete set of numbers. These are the integers from negative 4 to 2, including negative 4 and including 2. If I want to represent this on a number line, it would look like this. What I really want to get to, though, are sets of numbers that are infinite sets of numbers. Specifically, what if I want to describe all of the possible real numbers between negative 4 and 2? Visually, it would look like this. I want all of these numbers between negative 4 and 2. But we call these intervals. An interval in mathematics is a continuous set of real numbers. An interval is an infinite set, so it would be ridiculous to think that we could list all the possible values this way, so we need different notations to describe those. I want to describe all the real numbers between negative 4 and 2. There is a little ambiguity with this statement. Um, the question is, do I also want to include negative 4 and 2 in this set? Let's say I want to describe all the real numbers between negative 4 and 2, um, and I want to include negative 4, but I don't want to include 2 in that set. That might seem like a small thing, but it's really important. If I say the number is strictly between negative 4 and 2, I haven't said anything about negative 4 and 2. Here is a statement making sure I want to include the negative 4. That is actually a very big deal when describing intervals. Here is how we describe that with the number line. What I have done is I've put a bracket on the negative 4 right here. What that means specifically is that this set is between negative 4 and 2, but negative 4 is a value that's included in this set of numbers. Again, I've used this bracket to designate that negative 4 is included. We call negative 4 the lower bound of the set. It is the smallest number or the least number in this set. 2 is the upper bound. It's the largest possible number, though we put a parenthesis here to indicate it's not included. Besides the representation of a number line, the two ways that we describe this set is as an inequality or an interval. Interval is the most classical way of representing these. Most people feel really comfortable with inequalities because of the greater than or less than signs. If I want to represent this set in an inequality, it would be a compound inequality. It would be negative 4 is less than or equal to, let's use x as a representative number. Uh, less than 2. I don't put an equal sign here because I don't want it uh, to be equal to 2. 2 is not included. And how we read this is x is a representative member of this set and it has to satisfy the fact that it has to be greater than or equal to negative 4 and strictly less than 2. Interval notation is a way of describing this in a more a tighter format. If you look at this, the x isn't actually necessary. x is representing a value for this set. The negative 4 and the 2 are important, and then also whether it's included or not is important. Again, when I'm representing an interval notation, what I use is the lower bound and the upper bound for the set. And then I also need to indicate whether those upper bounds and lower bounds are included in the set. In an interval notation, it would look like this. I negative 4, comma 2. Uh, just like on the number line, I'm going to put a bracket around the negative 4 to say negative 4 is included in the set and a parenthesis around the 2 to say that 2 is not included in the set. Let's look at a few more examples of intervals. Here I have four different intervals. What I'm going to do now is just write these in interval notation and talk through them. In this case right here, I have this number line representing all the numbers bigger than 3, negative 3, excuse me, uh, and including negative 3 with the bracket right here. So negative 3 is the lower bound for the set. It's the least possible number. It is included. Uh, there is no upper bound. There's no upper limit to this interval. It's an open interval up to infinity. And in fact, when we don't have an upper bound, we use the infinity symbol to represent that. X is less than 6. So in this case, 6 then is the upper bound for the set. It's not included in the set. As in the previous example, there is no lower bound. We're told there's numbers less than 6, but we're not told a stopping point, a least stopping point. In this case, if we don't have a lower bound, we're going to write an infinity symbol in here and always put a parenthesis around the negative infinity or the positive infinity. If we want to represent all real numbers then, this is an unbounded set. There's no upper bound or lower bound. We would write that with this notation, negative infinity to infinity. In this case right here, we're given a set of numbers that's actually a disjoint, two disjoint intervals. Uh, what we're going to do is just represent both of those separately and then combine them with the union symbol. In this case, x is less than or equal to 5. Is 5 is the larger, po largest possible number. It is included in the set and there is no least number. 
x is greater than 7 would be 7 is the smallest possible number. We want numbers bigger than 7, and there's no bound on that either. And then we're going to use the union symbol uh, to join those into one set. Before we finish this video, I also want to make something very, very clear. Infinity is not an actual bound of any sorts. We put a positive infinity if there is no upper bound for the set. There's no greatest number. If there is no lower bound, we use the negative infinity. For that reason, you'll never see a negative infinity in this spot of interval notation, because that is the upper bound location. And you'll never see a positive infinity on the left-hand side of interval notation.